Here's what I've found out about podcasts, and that they are a growing medium, even though they were created years and years and years ago when the iPod was huge. You know, that's, that's why they existed in the first place, right? But since then, they have steadily increased in listenership to the point that now more than half of Americans have listened to a podcast at some point in their lives. And it's getting a little closer to that number of people who listen to podcasts on a semi-regular basis. And I think part of the reason, I bet you guys can all speak to this too, is that you can listen to a podcast and do something else. Isn't that huge? I mean, that's, that's why it's so big for me. If you watch video, if you read, you have to give it your 100% attention. But I can drive in the car, I can cut the grass, I can run, right? Yeah, it used to be really hard to make a podcast. You know, you would have to record, you'd have to have good microphones, and um, you'd have to figure out a way to get it onto iTunes, which is not easy and all that. But I have come across a tool that I really, really love to the point that I create a podcast myself with it that makes it really easy to create these. And I think it's a, a perfect fit for the classroom. And it's this tool called Anchor. Has anybody heard of Anchor? Okay, Lance, you've tried it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's what Anchor is. You can go to anchor.fm, that's the website. It's also a mobile app. That's one thing that's really nice about it is that you can produce it on your like laptop or Chromebook, but you can also do a lot of it on your mobile device too. So here's basically what Anchor will let you do. It'll let you, from your phone, record audio. It'll let you take call-ins from other people. It has sound effects and music you can mix in too. And so you take all that stuff, you put it top to bottom in the order that you want it to be, and that's your episode. You type the description in on your phone, you type the title in on your phone, and you hit publish. That's it. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it goes out to Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Stitcher. It goes out to Overcast, Pocket Cast, a lot of the places where people get their podcasts. So I started creating a podcast. You can find it on, on iTunes or wherever if you want called the Ditch That Textbook Podcast. I record little five-minute sessions, like five-minute episodes, and I just push them out. In fact, I've been recording a lot of them here, and I just do it right off of my phone. So pretty cool as far as that goes. This is what the interface looks like. So you can upload your audio files, you can record, you can take messages from other people, look at all the stuff that you've recorded in the past and transitions are the sound effects and the music and everything. So that's kind of the tool. Now, of course, telling you about the tool without a good application to it is not totally useful sometimes. So, um, and then this is the process, I just told you that earlier. But this is something that I think we could totally do with students in a couple of different ways. Imagine this. If you had a class podcast, what it could look like. So imagine throughout the week, you've got that Anchor app on your phone. And every so often you go up to one of your students and you're like, hey, what we were just doing in that lesson, would you tell me for like 45 seconds or a minute what you thought, like what was interesting to you, and then you go record, and they talk. And then you go to somebody else and you say, hey, would you tell me something that we learned this week that was important to you? And then you go record for like a minute. You gather a bunch of those little clips all throughout the week, publish them on Friday. It's an episode. How much work did that take you? Going up and asking kids what they learned. That's kind of our job anyway. And if you give that task to a kid, who's interested in doing that anyway, that's less for you to do. And now what have you got? You have art, an artifact of what the kids are learning. You get to hear it in their own voice about why they're passionate and interested about it. Who's your audience? Who would let, and that's something we talk to kids about anyway. Who are you writing for? Who are you creating this for? So here, tell me, who, who would listen to a podcast like that? Shout it out. Parents grandparents who don't get to see their kids as much their grandkids as much yeah exactly who else board members. board members what if your board heard the awesome things kids were doing and learning in your class huh principal you prospective employers teach other students yeah exactly exactly other classes you know what if you teach fifth grade and there are other fifth grade classes that listen into what you guys are doing 
then what if you become podcast buddies and you start recording them together? I mean, the, the possibilities are endless for this too. I could also see with Genius Hour or kids who are passionate about a particular thing, turn them loose on their own podcast. Now with Anchor, Terms of Service says you have to be 13 or older to create your own podcast. So just keep that in mind. Janelle, let me throw it over to you for a second. We worked with uh, Matt, uh, the students, and myself, because it was something that I had the students explore different podcasts. They were really into their sports podcasts, their hunting podcasts. And so how could we authentically put it into the classroom? So we um, worked, Matt um, Skyped in, he showed authentically how he was using it, and all of us teachers at our school, we were listening to his. And so um, they were just super excited. They did it with their genius projects. So yeah. it was, uh, it was so awesome that connection. And where, where are they in what grade? They are in fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, in what state? Minnesota. In Minnesota, there you go, yeah. Yes. And yes. so they start, and then let me ask you one more yes. thing real quick. Once you started doing that, what was the like response from the kids? How did, what did the kids think about it? They just did not want to stop. I mean, it was, right. they were just so engaged. I think the biggest thing too, is some of that collaboration that was happening, those soft skills that were going yeah. on when you were creating these podcasts. Right. Yeah, and they were still meeting the standards and everything, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, that's right. the way we were meeting our standards, right. in an authentic way. Exactly. So anyway, there, there's an example of kind of how this, this could look. So let me kind of wrap this up real quick. There's another example right there. This is a second grade podcast. So go check this out later and go listen to these guys. They started sharing what it is that they're doing in their classroom too, which is, which is pretty cool. So this is, the grass is always greener in second grade. I thought that was pretty, pretty clever. So, okay, gear. Here's the thing about podcasting gear. You don't have to get any these days. In fact, I've been running around doing um, recordings here at ISTE with the microphone in my phone. The microphones in these devices anymore are really good to the point that you don't have to go out and get something. So whatever devices you've got, I would suggest start there. If you get into it to the point where you're going, you know, the kids are really liking this. We'd like to have the audio quality go a little bit better. You might see if you have a USB headset or some earbuds that have a little bit better microphone and just do it by testing, doing some test recordings and seeing does that sound better. And then if you want to invest, which, you know, either by spending some of your funds for your class or doing a fundraiser, whatever it is that you, if you want to go up to that next level, these are two that I have that I really like. The ATR2100 is a USB mic that plugs into your computer or Chromebook, it has a really good sound. Yeah, yeah, that one's good. There's one called the Blue Yeti that's really good too. Um, and then this, this is one that I'll carry around in my pocket and plug into my phone. It's just a little lapel mic, but I'll, because it's so portable, I'll carry it around and I'll just put it up and people will talk into it and that works really well too. So, so really, you can start with the devices that you've already got and, and that makes a big difference, I think.